Hello and welcome back to Cartoon Geospatial Solutions. Uh, so in this video, uh, we are going to design a map and how to prepare a layout and export it using the ArcGIS software. Uh, so this video is a sequel to the two other videos uh, which we have already seen. Uh, so in the first video, uh, we saw how to download a topo sheet from the server from the website and how to georeference it using the ArcGIS software. And in the second video, we saw how to create some uh, spatial entities using the ArcGIS software. So uh, this video is the third one in that list. Uh, so uh, let's get started. Uh, so as you can see, I have created some more spatial features uh, like a forest and a railway line, uh, just for the map to look more attractive. So we'll start by creating the map first. So for that, uh, first you have to toggle to the layout view. So as you can see, this is the uh, data view. Uh, this is the data view and, and you have to toggle to the layout view. Uh, so for that you have to click this uh, small icon here. So uh, after clicking on it you can see that it has been toggled to the layout view. So uh, within this view uh, we are going to design the map and then, uh, then we are going to export it. Uh, so first, uh, so the first and foremost thing to do uh, uh, before creating a map is that first you have to choose the paper size and its uh, orientation. So for that, uh, just go to this uh, file drop-down box and then go to this uh, page and print setup option. Uh, select this. Uh, so as you can see, uh, the paper size is uh, A4. So uh, uh, there are lots of other various sizes here, uh, just like uh, letter A2, A3, etc. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to go with the A4 option. So I'm just going to click uh, the A4 option here. And, and when it comes to orientation, uh, since we are going to map only the study area here, uh, it is better to go for this portrait orientation. Uh, suppose in case if you want to prepare a locator map. Uh, so a locator map will be having the country, uh, country's uh, shape file first, and uh, then the uh, state or province, uh, province in the country, and then the study area within that state or province. Uh, so in that case, it is uh, best to go for this landscape orientation. Uh, so the main difference between the portrait and landscape orientation is that uh, landscape orientation will be having uh, a larger width as compared to the portrait orientation. Uh, so it is always good to go for this landscape when, it, uh, when you are trying to prepare a locator map. Uh, so in this case I default with the uh, default option which is the portrait orientation. So the paper size is fine, the orientation is fine. So I am going to just click OK. So uh, after doing that, uh, the second most uh, important thing is that uh, you have to insert a neat line. So a neat line is a border uh, which will be inserted within this page. So for that, go to insert option and then select this uh, neat line option. Uh, so in this neat line option, uh, you have to just uh, select this uh, place inside margins. So we are doing that, uh, this border will be placed within this uh, margin. Uh, as you can see, uh, this uh, shallow line represents the margin of this paper. Uh, so if you click this place inside margins, uh, this border will be appearing uh, within this uh, margin. So, uh, and also you can toggle with this style of the border which you want to choose. Uh, in this case, uh, let me go with this uh, default option, which is the uh, triple line option. So you can just uh, select the background, uh, select the background color of your choice if you need to, and then after doing this, just click OK. So as you can see, the border has been inserted within the margin. So this is the margin, and the border is within it. So this border option is uh, this border will be giving uh, more of an aesthetic appearance to your map. So that is the main reason for using this. Uh, so after inserting this border, uh, the next thing is that you have to include a graphical network. So a graphical network is a series of uh, latitude and uh, longitude values, right? So for that, uh, just uh, select on the uh, area of interest and then right click on it. Go to the properties option and then go to this uh, grids tab. So uh, within this grids tab, you have to select this uh, new grids option. So select it, uh, click next. Uh, so as you can see, it is asking for the interval here. The larger your study area is, uh, the bigger the interval size you have to mention. Uh, say for instance, if you want to map your entire country, 
then it is always good to give an interval of a bigger phase. Say for instance, uh, 2 degrees will be fine. Uh, but in this case, uh, since our study area is a bit smaller, uh, that is it is only covering a uh, smaller part of the state, uh, it, is, uh, it is better to give a smaller uh, interval. So in this case, I am going to go interval at degrees, 2 degrees. So it is uh, 2 degrees apart in the as well as, well as in the longitude. Select next, next, and finish. So now you have created the grid line. Uh, now it is important to stylize it. Uh, so for that, you have to go to the properties uh, option here. Uh, so as you can see, it is asking for the uh, line. Uh, so by clicking on the, uh, so if you want to the, uh, if you want your grid lines to be uh, running over the area of interest, uh, say for instance like this. If you want your grid lines to uh, pass over the area of interest like these uh, uh, vertical horizontal lines, uh, then you can go for this uh, show as a, a grid of lines option. In case if you don't want to show that, then you can go for this uh, uh, do not show lines or ticks. Uh, do not showing the uh, lines will always give you a better appearance when compared to showing the grid lines uh, or else it will be making the map a bit more clustered. So in this case, I'm going to uh, I'm going with this uh, I do not show option here and then uh, now we have to design the label so the labels option we can uh, change the font size uh, font type etc so in this case I'm going to increase the size to 8 and the type as a bold and then uh, when it comes to the label orientation uh, uh, so in this case the vertical labels so uh, I want the vertical labels, uh, that is the labels on the left and right side of the topo sheet to be along the line, uh, along the border of this topo sheet. Uh, so I just want it to be represented along the line like this and not like this. So for that, I have to enable these two options, left and uh, right options. So by doing so, uh, you will be getting the labels uh, along the border of this topo sheet like this. So all the labels will be within the border of this uh, whole page. Uh, so it will be giving you a better appearance uh, uh, rather than being like this. And uh, apart from these things, uh, I think other things are fine. So the uh, lines you have just uh, given it as uh, do not sh uh, show lines or ticks. And the labels you have just enabled the left and right option here. And uh, uh, the interval is also fine. It is uh, 2 degrees apart in both the latitude as well as the longitudinal lines. So just click OK and then click Apply. Uh, so as you can see, the values are plotted here. Select OK. So now that we have created the grid network, uh, first you have to zoom in our study area so that the entire study area is uh, so that this uh, this box covers our entire study area. So for that, just go to the zoom in option here. Uh, select this. This is a zoom in on our study area. So study area is only from this to uh, this corner, right? It is from only uh, it is only between these two corners. So uh, you have to just uh, zoom in from here and just end it here. So as you can see, it has been entirely filled. So a grid line, uh, so a grid area is totally filled with the study area. So now uh, we have just created the uh, neat line and the grid lines and we have just uh, zoomed in the study area to fit our area of uh, uh, grid. Uh, now we can add the title for this map. So title is always the most important thing. Uh, a title must always represent uh, what you are trying to showcase in this map. Say for instance, uh, in this case we are just trying to showcase the spatial entities which we have created so uh, it is always good to uh, include the title that uh, represents the work that we have done so uh, so uh, now to include the title just go to the insert option here and go to this title box so uh, i have already entered the title uh, as a default uh, so it is already coming here uh, and if you want to change it uh, just double click on this and then enter the uh, 
suitable text here. Uh, so after entering the text here, uh, you can also change the symbols uh, by changing its font color, size, etc. Uh, by selecting this, the change symbol option here. So uh, I'm going to change the color of my title to red. And then the style to bold. So select OK and OK. It has been changed here. Uh, so now, uh, after uh, uh, giving the title for your map, you have to give a uh, subheading. Uh, so in this subheading, you have to mention the uh, study area's name. So for that, you have to just go to this uh, insert option again. Uh, select this uh, text option. Uh, you'll be getting a text box uh, somewhere in your map canvas. And you have to just uh, drag and drop that uh, text to, uh, to the place where you want to have it. Uh, say for instance, in this case, I'm going to have it here. Uh, so after dragging it to the top, double click on it. So the study area is uh, Bellary District, Karnataka. Uh, so I'm, I'm just going to type that name here. You can also change the symbol here. I'm uh, using this option here. Let me increase the size here. And also, the style as bold. And I'm leaving the color as uh, black itself. So then select OK. It has been added. Uh, so if you want to uh, change the position of your title, you can just uh, drag and drop uh, to the suitable place somewhere. OK, so uh, we have added the title as well as the subheading. Uh, so now we have to add the north arrow. So uh, just go to the insert option and click on this uh, north arrow option. So, uh, so there are various styles for it. Uh, you can choose whichever you want. So in this case option, go with this option. You can also change the color of the arrow by clicking on this uh, properties dialog box. Uh, so you'll be getting a box uh, in which you can uh, play around with the uh, color of this arrow and the uh, type of font which is used in this arrow etc uh, but i'm going to leave it as default here it has come here so just uh, drag and drop it towards the top right hand corner of the layout so a north arrow must always be on the uh, top right hand corner of the layout so after adding this north arrow you have to include the scale bar just go to the insert option scale bar uh, uh, so uh, similar to north arrow you'll be having uh, various styles uh, so in this case, I'm going to go with this alternating scale bar here. Uh, and as you can see, the uh, units are in uh, miles here. Uh, so uh, if you want to change the units, I uh, just have to go to this properties uh, button here. I have to go and save this. So inside this, I have to go to the scale and units tab. Uh, under this uh, divisions unit, uh, I can change the uh, units to different categories. So in this case, I'm going to go with the uh, kilometer option. And then I want this kilometer to be displayed below the scale bar. That is, instead of uh, being uh, displayed in this manner, I have to, uh, if I want to uh, display my label uh, besides, uh, that is uh, beneath this scale bar, then uh, you can uh, change the label position to below center. Everything else is fine. You can also change the font uh, type, size, color, etc. here. Select OK, uh, click OK. It's been added. Uh, so the scale bar must always be on the uh, bottom left corner of the layout. So it has to be somewhere here. Okay, so now we have to add the uh, most important thing of this map, which is the uh, legend. So for that, you have to go to the insert option again. Uh, go to this legend option. So uh, in this box, as you can see, uh, these the items uh, that will be displayed in your legend box. So uh, these are the special entities uh, which are created. So cities, railway lines, road, forest, lake. Uh, but uh, I don't think we'll be needing this uh, to push it inside this uh, legend box. So we can remove it. So uh, if you want to remove any particular legend item, 
all you have to do is that you have to just select that particular item and then uh, select this button so that it will be erased from your uh, legend box it has been erased and you can also uh, rearrange the order in which these uh, items are being displayed uh, say for instance i want this uh, road as the uh, second item uh, so in that case i have to just uh, select this road feature and then select this uh, top arrow option so by doing this it will be putting my road uh, in between these cities and railway lines so it is cities roads uh, railway lines and then the uh, two polygon features, uh, forest and lake. So I'm going to click next. These are the default options. Uh, it will be asking for the title, uh, color, size, uh, font type, and uh, style, etc. So I'm going to leave it as uh, default here. In case if you want to style this, you can do these things. Uh, click on next. And it will be asking whether you have to give a border for this. Select the border of your choice here. And there are also uh, a background colors that are available. So in this case, I'm going to leave it as default here. So uh, there won't be any border and uh, background color for this uh, design box which we're going to create. So uh, click on next. Uh, these represent the uh, symbols which you can use to represent our legend items. So for road and daily lines, uh, it is always better to represent them as uh, straight lines. Even though you'll be getting various uh, uh, symbol styles here, uh, various styles for different uh, line features which you create uh, so in this case i think uh, road and railway lines can be best represented using uh, simple straight lines for the forest uh, i'll be using a, a natural shape so for forest uh, you have to just select on it and then go to this area drop down you can use this uh, a natural area shape so it will be giving more of a realistic appearance to your shape file and for the lake, it is always good to use this uh, a water body shape. Uh, so for that, just click on this lake shape file and then go to the area drop down again. And then select this uh, water body option here. Okay, so, uh, so the forest will be represented as a natural area, uh, while the lake will be represented as a, a water body. So uh, click on next uh, and finish. So as you can see, the legend box has been added. Uh, but you can uh, observe here that uh, it is slightly overlapping on our area of interest. So I think it is better if you divide this legend box into two columns. So for that, just right click on it and then go to properties and uh, inside the properties, uh, you have to divide the items into two columns, right? So for that, uh, say for instance, uh, I want the cities, roads and railway lines in the first column and the forest and lake in the second column. So in order to do that, uh, I have to select the uh, uh, last shape file of the first column. So the uh, last shape file of the first column is the railway lines. So I have to just select that uh, last shape file which I have to uh, include in the first column. So, uh, so just uh, select it. And then uh, all you have to do is that uh, just increase the column count by one, uh, that is to two. It has already been uh, given as 1. I have to just increase it to 2. And then you have to click apply. As you can see, it has been changed here. So, uh, uh, so the cities, roads, and railway lines are in the first column, and the two polygon shape fields are in the second column. So, uh, in this case, you can uh, play around with these uh, at different styles. So, just uh, click OK. So, uh, everything is fine here. Uh, so the last thing to do is that uh, we have to include a, a source text box. Uh, so this source text box will be representing the source from which we got this uh, topo sheet data, right? So for that, uh, you have to just go to the insert option again, uh, select this uh, text option, and just uh, drag and drop that uh, text box towards this uh, bottom that is below the scale bar. So. Uh, I double click on it so you have to just uh, enter the uh, source here so the source for this data is the uh, survey of india right so it is the survey of india topo sheet so you have to just enter the survey of india topo sheet here so it's soi topo sheet number 
so the uh, topo sheet number for this uh, for this place is uh, d43 e16 it has been already represented in the topo sheet uh, so it is d43 e16 right so uh, i just click ok uh, so it has been added here so this completes our uh, designing of the map as you can see the uh, six important elements uh, should be had uh, those six important elements are the uh, title the first one uh, and the north arrow uh, the graphical network a legend uh, scale bar and the source text box so these six things are very important for creating a map so uh, we have created everything uh, so uh, now we can export the map so we can export the map to uh, various formats uh, like a jpeg format uh, png format or a pdf file so in this case i am going to export it as a jpeg file so uh, you have to just go to the file option here and then go to the export map option so let me give a, a suitable name for this uh, say for instance sample map it has been saved as a jpeg type here so just uh, click on save so let me see the uh, exported map now so as you can see this is the uh, map which you have created let me open it it's fine so uh, all the items are properly created and they have been properly exported uh, it's, uh, it's good these are the steps uh, which you need to follow to create a map uh, using the arcgis software and export it so I hope uh, this video was of some use to you uh, and thank you so much for watching and uh, please do support my channel for more interesting and important topics like these. Thank you so much again.